Hi, I'm Dr. David Coley, and this video will take you through the GALS screening questions and examination, which are designed for routine assessment of a patient. The GALS screen starts with three questions, which should be included during routine systemic inquiry. These are intended to identify common problems in the musculoskeletal system and significant abnormalities in the upper and lower limb function. Firstly, do you have any pain or stiffness in your muscles, joints or back? Can you dress yourself completely without any difficulty? Can you walk up and down stairs without any difficulty? The actual sequence in which we do the GALS examination can vary and it, in practice it's often more convenient to do those elements, i.e. the walking and the examination when the patient's standing all in one go before putting the patient on the couch. So this is the approach that we'll be using in the video. So the patient's gait is the first thing that we're starting to assess and particularly we're looking for smoothness, symmetry and the ability to turn quickly. So can I just ask you to take a few steps, walk, stop there. When we've got the patient standing, the next thing we'll be looking at is the muscle bulk. We'll have a look from behind the patient, look at the trapezius muscles, are they equal and symmetrical, the shoulder girdle bulk. I'm looking to see has he got a straight spine, that there's no scoliosis or curvature of the spine, the iliac crests, and I'm seeing that these are level. Then I'm assessing gluteal muscle bulk and size, I'm looking at the popliteal fossa, that there's no obvious swelling. And then I'm looking at the hind foot for any obvious deformity or swelling. Now we'll examine the spine. I'll move on to the side of the patient. And here we're looking to make sure that they've got a normal cervical uh, lordosis. They've got a normal thoracic kyphosis. And that they've got a normal lumbar lordosis. At this point, I'll ask the patient to bend forward and touch their toes. And I'm using two or three fingers on the lumbar spine to assess lumbar spine movement. So can I just ask you to bend forward and touch your toes and come back up. And as the patient comes back up, those fingers should come together. And this indicates that the lumbar spine is moving and that that movement isn't purely coming from the hips. So looking from the front of the patient, again, we're looking for symmetry. We're looking at muscle bulk, pectoralis and shoulder muscles. I often ask the patient to stand in the normal anatomical position, so with their hands out to the side slightly. This will show that they've got normal elbow extension. I'll then ask them to do the cervical spine lateral flexion. Temporomandibular joint pain is often associated with things like rheumatoid arthritis and inflammatory joint disease. So it's useful to screen for this by asking the patient to open their jaw wide and move it side to side. Then the next thing we ask them to do is put their hands up behind their head with their elbows back. And this looks at glenohumeral movement, but it also looks at elbow flexion, and it also assesses function, as it's important to be able to comb your hair, brush your teeth, and feed yourself. And pop your hands uh, in front of you with your elbows into the side, and turn your hands over. So this is a assessed a composite movement of elbow range of movement, uh, rotation, and wrist movement. And then I'm going to inspect the patient hands uh, for any skin changes, swelling or deformity in the fingers. With your hands turned over, I'm looking at the palms of the hands, I'm looking at muscle bulk and for any tendon thickening or abnormality. Then I'm going to ask the patient to make a fist. Again, a functionally important test to do, and open your hands up. Touch each finger together for me. Precision pinch is important for assessing concentration and smoothness. And then I'm going to do a grip strength test where I ask the patient to squeeze as hard as they can and relax. Gently squeezing across the metacarpal phalangeal joints screens for inflammatory joint disease. That's great if we can get you up onto the couch. Now we'll move on and assess the legs with the patient on the examination couch. I'm going to assess full knee flexion, hip flexion, and internal rotation at the hip. I'll do that for both sides. Then I'm going to do a patella tap. Looking for any fluid or knee effusion. 
what's sometimes useful is the cross fluctuation or bulge test. And finally, I'm going to move on to examine the patient's feet. I'm going to look for any callus formation on the soles of the feet. And I'm going to squeeze gently across the metatarsal phalangeal joints while watching the patient's face. Any pain? No. If no abnormality has been detected, this should be recorded as GALS NAD in the notes. If you've been alerted, however, to a musculoskeletal problem by the screening questions, your examination or spontaneous complaints that the patient may have, you'd then need to go on and conduct a regional examination of the relevant joints. You can watch a full demonstration of this in our REMS videos.